So in the last session, we discussed first what is the background or the context of this bar, <clears throat> what led to this war, and also we started with the first verse in which the Trashtra made his inquiry from whom? From Sanjaya. Okay. So just to again dwell on how the Trashtra and the Yodhan were born and what can we learn from this? So every day we try to see what is the practical application. And then Bhagavad Gita is meaningful. Otherwise, it's only theory, not practical. So Maharaja Shantanu, you all have, I'm sure you know who Shantanu was. He married Ganga. And with Ganga, Bhishma Pitama was born, Devavrat, right? And he decided he took a vow not to get married. You are aware of this, correct? You have seen Mahavarat. Correct? Asha Ji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, sir. So when Bhishpitava decided not to get married, there was a question who will continue with the dynasty. And then Shantanu got attracted to Satyavati married to Satyavati and produced two sons, Chitranga and Vichitravirya. Chitranga died very early and Vichitravirya married Amba Ambika Ambalika, right? Daughters of Kashinaresh. But Vichitravirya also died without producing any child. So again, there was no one to continue the dynasty. Satyavrati was in hurry to have someone who can continue. Satyavrati had another son with Parashar Muni. Do you remember? What is his name? Anyone? Name of Satya, son of Satyavrati produced with Parashar Muni. Yes, Anshu Mataji. Ved Vyas. Very good. Ved Vyas. Okay. So he she requested Ved Vyas to produce children from her daughter-in-laws, Ambika and Ambalika. Okay. Ved Vyas was very learned Acharya scholar. And when she requested Ved Vyas, that time he was doing severe austerity in jungle, in forest. So he was not very really good looking. He was very really strong, big body, but dirty looks after having done so much austerity. <laughs> you can imagine somebody who is in jungle for many, many years, how he look like. So when Vedvars entered bedroom of Ambika, the moment Ambika saw Vedavya, she got scared and closed her eyes immediately. Okay. Closed eyes and she got scared. And who was produced from this union? Dhritarashtra, who was blind from his birth. Okay. So this attempt was not really very successful to produce a healthy son. And then she requested Ved Vyas to go and unite with Ambalika, another daughter-in-law. So when he entered, she also got scared, but she did not close her eyes, but she was literally shivering while she saw Ved Vyas. In that mood, the son who was produced was very weak and his name was Pandu son of, sorry, father of, <coughs> not really father. <laughs> he died without any child. So both the attempts were not very successful, did not produce healthy children. 
So Satyavrati, who was in hurry, again requested Vedavyas to make another attempt with Ambika. So Ambika was already very disgusted, you know, with the first union with Vedavyas. So what she did was she replaced herself with her maid servant with the name Shudri. She was Dasi, you know, servant. She made her wear nice, nice ornaments, you know, look like she's like. Uh, Ambika and made her sit in her bedroom and when Vedvyas entered he understood that it is not Ambika it is her maid servant but he thought maybe this is the will of God so he went and united and this servant, maid servant was in the mode of goodness Satuguna was prominent in this maid servant Mentally, she served Vedavyas before the union. And with this union, who was born? Vidura was born. Dasi Putra. Okay. And all of three got married. Dhritarashtra got married when he grew up with Gandhari. Pandu married to Kunti and Madhuri. And Vidur married to Sulabha. Okay. Now Pandu had a curse that he could not unite. So Kunti produced children through demigods. She was benedicted by Durvasa Muni that she was in position to call demigods whenever she wanted. So she called demigods and produced three sons. And then through Madhuri produced two sons, total five Pandavas through Kunti and Madhuri. On the other hand, Gandhari also got pregnant. Okay. But when she knew, when she got to know that Kunti has given birth to Yudhishthira, she got very envious. Why she got envious? Now Yudhishthira has become the king of Kuru dynasty, not her son. Out of envy, she banged her womb and produce a, you know, what do you call, literally a flesh, piece of flesh from her womb, out of envy. And then Vedvyas came and distributed that flesh into 100 pots. And after some time, 100 sons of Gandhari was born like this. Okay, so what is the learning here? Dhritarashtra was blind when Ambika was scared and closed her eyes. Correct? Gandhari produced her sons out of envy. And we know who is the, you know, who got birth. Villain of Mahabharat, Duryodhan, and his other 19 brothers. So in which mood we produce a child is very important. Right? We invite a particular soul based on the conditions or the mood in which husband and wife unite. Duryodhan was a product of closed eyes and scared, and Duryodhan was a product of envy. And the whole life he envied Pandavas. That's why we have something called as Garbhadhan Sanskara Vedic ritual to invite a pious soul inside the womb of the mother. Okay, so this is an invitation to a soul who has a good nature, pious nature. But nowadays, you know, nobody follows. All the children are a product of sense gratification and hence they are born with desire for sense gratification. <laughs> Isn't it? Nowadays, many devotees, the day they want to unite to produce a child, they chant 50-50 rounds every day, both husband and wife, before they unite. 
Why they read Bhagavatam full day before they unite in the night? Why to invite a very pious soul inside the bone? All they are explained in our Vedic literature, but people have become very advanced nowadays. You know, so they don't want to follow and produce villains, not heroes. <laughs> So because of this envy of Duryodhan, this battle happened. <coughs> battle of Kurukshetra. Okay. And we discussed the entire background in which there was no choice but to fight. Correct? Okay? That we discussed in the previous class. And in the previous class, we also discussed first words spoken by Dhritarashtra. This is the only verse which Dhritarashtra has spoken. After this, you know, Dhritarashtra patiently hears everything spoken by Sanjaya. Okay. So last week we did first verse of first chapter. Dhritarashtra Uvacha Dharam Kshetre Kurukshetre Samuveta Yusavaha Mamakaha Pandavashcheva Kim Kuruvat Sanjaya. So, what we discussed briefly in the previous class that Dhritarashtra is making an inquiry from Sanjaya. Actually, he was desirous that battle should happen and Duryodhan should win the battle and get the kingdom. Correct? He also had a doubt. What doubt? Because of the influence of the place, Kurukshetra, which is a holy place, pious people like Pandavas will win the match, will win the battle and get the kingdom. He was doubtful whether Duryodhana will win or not. Why? Due to the influence of the place in which this battle is being fought. Dharam Kshetra, a place of piety. A place of dharma. So in a place of dharma, dharma cannot happen. He was doubtful. He also had a hope that maybe Yudhishthir, because of the influence of the place, Yudhishthir may say, okay, let me not fight. Let it go to Duryodhana. Okay. He also had a worry. What worry? Maybe Duryodhana may change his mind. He may become religious, he may become spiritual due to the influence of place and may renounce the battle and may say, okay, let Yudhishthir take the kingdom. So he had so many questions, confusions going on in his mind. What is the practical learning here? When one is too much attached to something, he is always anxious, always confused, always fearful. This is the result of attachment. He was attached to his sons. He was attached to Duryodhan. He was attached to the kingdom. That's why he said, Mamakaha Pandavas. Now he is a king of Hastinapur. For him, his sons and Pandu's sons both should be same in the position of a king, correct? For king, will not differentiate between his family members and other family members, correct? For him, both are same, but he is differentiating, saying, Ma Makaha, my sons, Pandavas and Pandu sons. When they came to the battlefield, what did they do? They came for what? Samaveta Yusavaha. They entered the battlefield to fight, and then he's asking, what did they do? Okay. You understand what is attachment, no? You know, once I was hearing in some lecture this small story to illustrate what is attachment. In a train in Bombay, and this is a real story, by the way. In train, some passengers were sitting, somebody entered 
the compartment, he left his nice looking bag, suitcase, and asked the fellow passenger, I'll just come back in two minutes. I have to buy something for the platform. He went, train started, he did not come back. So one station went, two stations went, this person did not come. And this person who is sitting inside the compartment, he's looking at this nice looking, you know, suitcase and wondering where is the owner of this suitcase. After three, four stations, he developed attachment to this suitcase. Maybe if owner does not come, I'll claim this to be mine. <laughs> you know. By the time he reached destination, the desire, that attachment got intense. And he almost decided that I'll carry the suitcase and go. And here there's no owner. Then police came, asked, whose suitcase is this? He said, mine. He said, what? The whole journey he was contemplating, you know, that I'll claim the suitcase. And when the suitcase was opened, there was a dead body inside the suitcase. So when you develop a desire to get something and you contemplate on this again and again, again and again, again and again, you develop attachment. When you develop attachment, you lose the power of discrimination. What is good, what is bad. You can't differentiate. Like here, Dhritarasht was told by Vedvyas before the battle that all your sons will die. Still he went ahead and took a chance because of attachment. So we have to see हम लोग किन किन चीजों से आ सकते हैं अटैच्ड हैं है ना दोस थिंग्स विल बिकम अ कॉज ऑफ वरी एंजाइटी फियर फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस वन ऑफ द पर्पसेस ऑफ भगवत गीता इज टू बिकम डिटैच्ड नॉट अटैच्ड एंड गेट आउट ऑफ फियर गेट आउट ऑफ एंजाइटी गेट आउट ऑफ कंफ्यूजन After end of Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna says, Nasht moha smriti labdha. Krishna, now my illusion, my attachment is over, destroyed. Smriti labdha. Now I have regained my memory and power of discrimination. Okay? So Bhagavad Gita is going to touch your all attachments. I'm just warning in the beginning itself. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Let's go to the second verse. Sanjay, Uvacha. Everybody has a copy of Bhagavad Gita? Show me a copy. Everybody, please. Okay. Very good. Dharmendra Prabhu, aapko vas nahi Oh, sir, hai. it is there actually. I have to bring it. Okay. Saat mein leke rakhi, sir. Mere paas nahi hai. You get it from your local, some temple. If ah, I'll, you I'll get find it. it, you can tell me. I'll yeah. tell you from here. Okay. okay. All right. Sanjay Uvacha. Maybe you can recite after me. Don't you matter? You have to recite it. Unmute yourself. Sanjay Uvacha. Sanjay Uvacha. Dhrishtvatu Pandu, Dhrishtvatu Pandu Vanikam. Dhrishtvatu Pandu Vanikam. Vyudam Duryodhan Astada. Vyudam Duryodhan Astada. Acharyam Upasangamaya. Acharyam Upasangamyam. Sangamya. Raja Vachanam Abravit. Raja Vachanam Abravit. Very nice. Thank you. Word by word meaning is like this. Sanjaya Uvacha, Sanjaya said, Dishtva after seeing Tu, but Pandava Anikam, the soldiers of the Pandavas, Vyudam arranged in a military phalanx, Duryodhana, King Duryodhana, 
Tada at that time, Acharyam, the teacher, Up Sangamaya approaching Raja, the king, Vachanam words, Abhravit spoke. Translation purple by Shapopad, Shapopad ki. Sanjaya said, O king, after looking over the army arranged in military formation by the sons of Pandu, King Duryodhan went to his teacher and spoke the following words. So what was the trash inquiry? What did my sons and what did Pandavas do? That was the inquiry, right? After they have gathered in this battlefield, what did they do? So Sanjay is first explaining about what did Duryodhan, leading son of the trust, do in the beginning. Okay, what did he do? King Duryodhana went to his teacher and spoke the following words. He went to his teacher. Actually, when Duryodhan, Duryodhana was not hoping that Pandavas will come with a lot of soldiers. You know, they were five brothers and they were hundred brothers. Kaur was hundred brothers. He was thinking, Choti moti sena leke aayenge, hum do din ke andar khadam kar denge. He was thinking like this. And he also had received army of Krishna. We discussed in the last session. And how did he receive army of Krishna? Narayani sena. She was thinking all great soldiers on my side and my Sena is many more times than Pandava Sema. So victory is in my hand. So it's not going to be a big challenge. But when he saw a lot of soldiers from Pandava's side, he got a little scared. He was not expecting. Yeah. Duryodhan brought 11 Akshahoni Sena. Akshahoni. I'll talk about it. What is Akshahoni? And Pandava's had 7 Akshahoni Sena. How many? Seven Akshahani and Kauravas had 11 Akshahani. How many percentage more Kauravas had? Anybody? Mathematician here? Quickly, in one minute. 40% more. 40% more. About 40% more. <laughs> calculator like you better. <laughs> no, okay. it is... Uh, <laughs> About 40% more. Yes. You did 4 by 11. Actually, it should be, yes, 4 by 11. 4 by 7. Hona we are saying with, with respect to Pandava Sena, how much Sena was more. So it is more than 50%. You know? So more than 50% Sena Kauravas had compared to Pandava's soldiers. Still, he was scared. So he did not expect they can even bring seven Akshahoni. And what is Akshahoni? I'll just explain briefly. Akshahoni basically is a combination of soldiers on the ground, soldiers on the horses, on elephants, and on chariots. Okay. Padal chalne wale, ghode pe sawar, hati pe sawar, aur rath pe sawar. Usko Akshahoni bolte hain. Or ek akshani mein kitne hote hain? I'll just tell you. One akshani means 21,870 chariots, 21,870 elephants, 65,610 horses, and 1,9350 soldiers on ground. That makes one akshani. So like this, Kaurvas had 11 and Pandvas had 7. Okay. So now Duryodhan is walking towards Acharya Upasangamaya. To his Acharya. Who is Acharya? Dronacharya. Now he is walking towards Dronacharya to give an order. A disciple walking towards his spiritual master to give an order. That is the mood of a Duryodhana. 
or a disciple like Duryodhana. Yudhishthir also went before the battle to Dronacharya. But how did he go? He removed all the ornaments which he was wearing. He removed armor which he was wearing. So he went like a simple looking disciple to his spiritual master. When he went, he paid obeisances, pranam ki adhanacharya ko, and he begged for permission to fight the battle. This is the mood of Yudhishthira. Kya mood hai? As a disciple, he is approaching his spiritual master, acharya, and begging for his blessings or seeking permission to fight the battle. On the other hand, a disciple like Duryodhana is approaching Dronacharya to give an order. So you can understand what should be the right mood of a devotee, of a disciple. You know? We all are disciples, we all are students. Correct? So when we are trying to seek knowledge, what should be our mood? You know, submissive, surrendered, grateful. That should be the mood of his disciple. Not like the Yodhana, challenging. He's going to challenge now in the next verse. His spiritual master. Okay. That's why he was bereft of any blessing from his acharya. So Yodhana went like a king. Raja Abhravit. You know? He went like a king. And Yudhishthir Maharaj approached Dronacharya like a disciple. Dronacharya did not respond to Duryodhan at all. To Yudhishthir Maharaj, he responded by saying, Vijayai Bhav. Okay, so how to attract blessings from your spiritual master by keeping a very submissive, respectful, and grateful attitude. Is Arkal ke bacho me, Arkal ke students me nahi hai, school me ab dekhte hai. No one teaches them what should be the mood because, see, there were two or three things in Vedic culture which could never be commercialized, and one of them is education. Education is not supposed to be commercialized. And when you commercialize, what happens? We are all witnessing. Teachers do not have respect for students and students do not have respect for teachers. Why? Students think, I am paying for what I am getting. Teacher is being paid to give what he is giving. So it has become a commercial aspect. Lain den. Paisa do, gyan lo. That's why you know, that mood has become completely absent and hence there is hardly any knowledge flow. Knowledge flows when the mood is submissive. Like the water is falling the Student ka mood jitna submissive hai, utna teji se gyan ka prabha hota hai. So knowledge transfer is a function of how much submissive a student is. Or how much surrendered a student is. Later, Krishna will talk about in fourth chapter, what are the qualities of a student? Three qualities primarily talks about. You can note down. It's relevant to all of you also as students. First quality is eagerness to learn. Ussukta. Bhagavad Gita sunne ki, janne ki ussukta. And that ussukta will bring you into the class five minutes before class starts. That is a symptom of eagerness. Second is Obedience. Agya karita. 
to the instructions received from your master, spiritual master. To what extent we are obedient, to that extent we will grow spiritually. And third is Kritagyata, gratefulness. If a student has these three qualities, he will make wonderful advancement in this journey. If not, then we'll remain like Duryodhana. <laughs> Bereft of blessings. <coughs> okay. So Duryodhana is approaching like a king in the exploitation mood while Yudhishthira Maharaj approached in service mood. To serve his spiritual master and Duryodhana is approaching to exploit his spiritual master. Okay, so that is the difference between two approaches. So now I can request uh, maybe one of you to read the purport. Right? Anyone can read. Who has not spoken today? Sunil Prabhu, Apari. Tridrast was blind from birth. Unfortunately, he was also bereft of spiritual vision. He knew very well that his sons were equally blind in the matter of religion. And he was sure that they could never reach an understanding with the Pandavas, who were all pious since birth. Still, he was doubtful about the influence of the place of pilgrimage and Sanjaya could not understand his motive in asking about this situation on the battlefield. Sanjaya wanted therefore to encourage the despondent king and thus assured him that his sons were not going to make any sort of compromise under the influence of the holy place. So, uh, Ritrajt was doubtful that his sons will make or Duryodhana will make compromise here by telling that Duryodhana is active in the battlefield. Don't worry, Ritrajtra. He is very active in the battlefield. He is not going to compromise. He is now walking towards his Acharya to say something. Listen, what did he say? Okay. So, giving him assurance to Ritrajtra, don't worry. Battle is going to happen. Your sons are very active. Eh? They are so fallen that even the place is not making any influence on them. <laughs> okay. So don't worry. Please go ahead, Sanjaya. <coughs> Sanjaya therefore informed the king that his sons, that his son Duryodhana, after seeing the military force of Pandava, at once went to the commander-in-chief, Dronacharya, to inform him of the real position. Although Duryodhana is mentioned as the king, he still had to go to the commander on account of seriousness of the situation. He was therefore quite fit to be a politician. But Duryodhana's diplomatic Venir could not disguise the fear he felt when he saw the military arrangement of the Pandavas. Okay. So basically, his fear is visible. He is described as king. Others should walk towards him, but king is walking towards Acharya. Okay. And what did he say to Guru Dronacharya? We'll see in the next verse. You can only recite after me, Sunil Prabhu. Pashyatam Pandu Putranam Pashyatam Pandu Putranam Acharya Mahitim Kamum Chamum Acharya Mahitim Kamum Pashyatam Pandu Putranam Pashyatam Pandu Putranam Acharya Mahatim Chamum 
आचार्य महतिम च मम जूडाम द्रुपद पुत्रेण जूडाम द्रुपद पुत्रेण तव शिष्येण धीमता तव शिष्येण धीमता ओ माय टीचर बिहोल्ड द ग्रेट आर्मी ऑफ द सन्स ऑफ पांडु so expertly arranged by your intelligent disciple the son of drupada so what is he saying he saying see acharya look at the arrangement of pandavas army so wonderfully arranged and you know who has arranged it your own disciple has arranged it so he is finding fault in his acharya you know is going to even next step of being a bad student what is saying hey dronacharya go and see wonderful arrangement of pandavas and you know who has done it he is saying drupad son drupad putrena so he is not taking the name of the son remember he is not taken who is the son he is saying son of drupad why we'll try to understand why the purpose of making this statement by the yodhana is to instigate dronacharya he had a fear that all the pandavas are so dear to dronacharya he may, he might become lenient towards them you know jab arjun samne aayega to duro ho sakta dronacharya soche nahi to mera favorite student hai let me not kill him so he is worried he might become lenient so he is trying to now you know manifest anger in dronacharya instigate dronacharya to the matter to the fact that he is trying to find fault in dronacharya who is this drupad drupad and dronacharya were students in gurukul together when they were studying drupad was from a royal family prince and dronacharya was simple acharya simple teacher <coughs> and when both were friends in gurukul drupad promised dronacharya that in future when i grow up and i get the kingdom in my name i'll give half of it jaise bachche to koi bhi sakte hai na <laughs> एक दूसरे को चांद दे सकते हैं सो द्रुपद गेव हाफ ऑफ द किंगडम ही प्रोमिस टू गेव हाफ ऑफ द किंगडम वेन दे ग्रो अप एंड ही बिकम्स किंग सो वेन दे ग्रू अप द्रुपद बिकेम द किंग ऑफ द किंगडम एंड द्रोणाचार वॉज ए वेरी सिंपल ब्राह्मणा बट सेटिस्फाइड वेरी सिंपल ब्राह्मणा to the extent that he did not have even milk to buy and give his son he was so poor so his wife told reminded him hey you had a friend no called drupad who promised you that he will give half of his kingdom why don't you go and ask for some help at least you can ask a cow from him if not kingdom dronacharya went with the hope to king drupad and sought some help try to remind him that i am your friend from childhood friend and i need help you had promised to give me half the kingdom i don't need half the kingdom just give me a couple of cows i can at least feed my son give milk to my son drupad said who are you <laughs> who are you that time we were at the same level student so i may have promised you but now our level is very different you are a poor brahmana and i am the king so he refused to help dronacharya he felt very bad humiliated disgusted and after some time he told arjuna arjuna this is the time for guru dakshina no अर्जुना बोले क्या चाहिए गुरु महाराज मुझे द्रुपद चाहिए <laughs> मुझे द्रुपद का राज्य चाहिए सो अर्जुना वेंट फॉर वन द बैटल 
arrested Drupad and brought him in front of his guru Dronacharya. Dronacharya said, "You said no. We are not at equal. Now this king kingdom belongs to me. Correct? Not to you. Now to make it equal, I give you half a kingdom back. <laughs> now we are equal." Okay, so Drupad felt very humiliated. He went back. Shatri hai na, khun bhot garam hota hai. He went back and he performed a yagya to produce a son who could kill Dronacharya. So in, from that yagya, brother and sister manifested. Brother is, anyone, any idea? Who's, what is the name of this son and daughter? Anyone? Yes, Anshu Mataji. Daughter is Rabdi. Yes. And son. Dhumna. Somebody is speaking from behind. Very good. Dhumna. <laughs> Dhumna. Dhumna. Okay. So Dush Dhumna was a son of Drupad produced from a fire sacrifice with the purpose to kill Dronachar. And the Dusht Gumna came to Dronacharya to learn Dhanurvidya. <laughs> Look at this. He is supposed to be killing Dronacharya. And he going to Dronacharya. Guruji, you have to show me. I will do your work. And Dronacharya did not hesitate to teach him. This is the greatness of Acharya like Dronacharya. No attachment. This is a wonderful example of no attachment. Even to his own body. Forget about anything else. He said, okay, no problem, but I'll teach you. So Dronacharya taught Drushdumna, then who became commander-in-chief of Pandava's Sena, and he arranged all the Sena. And Duryodhan is reminding Dronacharya, look at this. You taught Dushdumna. You knew he's going to kill you and you still taught him and look at the result. He has arranged this Pandava's Sena so wonderfully. He's finding fault in his Acharya. That you did a big mistake. You did a, you know, horribly big mistake. Politician, eh, na? Gone. Duryodhan. So trying to instigate Dronacharya, that Dronacharya should not become lenient to Pandavas. Clear? So we'll read the purport and then we'll go next. Shweta Mataji, would you like to read? Duryodhana, a great diplomat, wanted to uh, point out the defects of Dronacharya. The great Brahmana commander-in-chief Dronacharya had some political quarrel with King Drupada, the father of Draupadi, who was Arjuna's wife. As a result of this quarrel, uh, Drupada performed a great sacrifice by which he received the benediction of performed a great sacrifice by which he received the benediction of having a son who would be able to kill Dronacharya. Dronacharya knew this perfectly well and yet as a liberal Brahmana, he did not hesitate to impart all his military secrets when, when the son of Drupad Dhrishtadumnya was entrusted to him for military education now. On the battlefield of Kurukshetra, Drashtadumna took the side of Pandavas and it was, it was he who arranged for their military phallix. After having learned the art of art from Dronacharya, Duryodhana pointed out this mystique of Dronacharya so that he might be alert and uncompromising in the fighting. By this, he wanted to point out 
also that he should not be similarly lenient <laughs> in battle against the pandavas who were also dronacharya's affectionate students arjuna especially was his most affectionate and brilliant student dronacharya also warned that such leniency is in the fight would lead to defeat duryodhana also warned that such leniency in the fight would lead to defeat okay so his purpose of approaching his spiritual master is to ignite anger so that he does not compromise and becomes lenient to the sons of pandu who are very dear to him his favorite students okay and after this verse number 4 uh, duryodhana is taking names of many fighters who are fighting on behalf of pandavas he is taking the names of bhima and arjuna yeah yudhana virata dropada then verse number 5 he is talking about dishth ketu chekitana kashi raja purujit kunti bhoja and sevya in 6 again he is talking some more so like this he is, he took almost 19 names of great soldiers who were fighting on behalf of pandavas okay after this we'll try to understand the next session theek hai koi aapka prashn ho to pooch sakte hain if you have any question you can ask acha before i forget so if you remember i had mentioned about children classes also which we started from yesterday so some students joined from yesterday for yesterday's session so for out, outside udaipur we have session on saturday and for udaipur we have session on sunday so in case you have still not registered your child or your neighbor's child or your any relative's child you can still register and make them join from next session saturday 4:30 to 5:30 pm yes mahajan prabhu ji mata ji <coughs> Yes. Uh-huh. Prabhu ji, I just wanted to ask you, how many verses are there in first chapter? In first chapter, around I think forty-three verses. But uh, they have written forty-six here. Where? Ah, no, forty-six. First... Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. In first chapter. Forty six. Yes, correct. Yeah, because your last time when uh, the question was asked, how many verses are there? I wrote forty six, and uh, they said it is incorrect. अच्छा, maybe mistake from our side, Martha. Yeah. Correct. और मैंने लिखा था forty three. मेरा मेरा भी गलत है उसे. अच्छा, आपको एक marks extra. ठीक है. Yeah. <laughs> you get one extra mark. आपको अच्छा आप में से कितने लोग जब करना शुरू कर दिए प्लीज रेज यू हैंड You started chanting every day. शुरू किया ये पर एक कर रहे हैं एक राउंड अभी कोई बात नहीं कर रहे हैं ना एक राउंड कर रहे हैं एक राउंड कर रहे हैं every day. Okay very good. Okay Huma Mata ji you are chanting how many rounds? Two. Very good. Sri Gopal Prabhu ji. Four. Oh wonderful. Himanshu. Himanshu Prabhu ji. हाँ मैं दो राउंड कर रहा हूँ. Okay Sunil Prabhu. Two rounds, mm-hmm. wonderful. Om Prakash Prabhu ji. Unmute, करके बोलिए. Unmute करके. मैं unmute हुआ नहीं. Mm-hmm. 
अच्छा उंगलियों पे दिखा दी थी ओके टेन राउंड ओ माई गॉड वेरी गुड वंडरफुल श्वेता माता जी राजेंद्र प्रभु जी नॉट यूट इज स्टार्टेड नो प्रॉब्लम यू कैन स्टार्ट फ्रॉम टूडे रावण वॉज अबाउट टू लीव इज बॉडी लॉर्ड राम सेंट इज ब्रदर लक्ष्मण टू लर्न समथिंग फ्रॉम रावण आपको पता क्या सीखा था उसने वॉट डिड राम टीच लक्ष्मण यदि मन में कुछ अच्छा करने का भाव आए तो तुरंत करना चाहिए विशुनाथ प्रोकेस्टिनेट विशुनाथ पोस्टपोनेट बुरा करने का भाव आए तो टाल देना चाहिए अगले हफ्ते करेंगे अच्छा करने का भाव आए तो तुरंत करना चाहिए बुरा करने का भाव आए तो टाल देना चाहिए कोलंबो में एक बार वन डिवोटी केम फ्रॉम दिल्ली सो आई टू किम टू इस्कॉन टेम्पल एंड यू क्लाइंबिंग द स्टेप्स सो ही टुक आउट सम फ्यू नोट्स एंड ट्राई टू पुट इन टू माई पॉकेट सो ऐसे क्या कर रहे हैं आप प्रभु जी बोले नहीं ऊपर दान देना है तो मैं कहा आप जा रहे हैं ना आप डालिएगा कहते नहीं अभी मेरे मन में आया है ऊपर पहुंचते पहुंचते मन फिर गया तो लेट मी डू इट राइट नाउ let me not postpone it after 5 minutes so if you want to do something nice don't wait start it from today not tomorrow priti mata ji <laughs> okay start from today today is sunday you like more time relatively okay kishor pau ji wouldn't have started i'm sure i'll maybe i'll work out something for him abhi prabhu one okay Asha Mata ji, welcome. She has joined for the first time today. Yes, sir. She and I don't understand what the repeat to four times, five times. I'll I'll explain. I'll explain. Don't worry. I'll explain. Moon Sri Mata ji, sixteen rounds. <coughs> Unmute yourself. Yes, yes, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Going on. She is chanting sixteen rounds every day. This takes almost two hours, so we should have people like him, her, you know, to motivate others. Okay, so you have to you have to catch now, Bhuvan Sri Mata Ji, <laughs> as soon as possible. Okay, so gradually, eh? gradually and steadily, right? What principle we normally follow is every Ekadashi we increase, try to increase one round. So every every fifteen days we try to increase one round, make it steady, and and then go next like this. So you can follow the same. Uh, formula same principle theek hai every 15 day one round you can increase yes sunil prabhu you raise your hand prabhu ji uh, last time you were mentioning uh, 